What's up vapers? Thanks for checking out Daily Vape TV. My name is Nick and welcome to Fresh Build Week Day 4. Today we've got a dual coil RTA build for you guys. I'll be building it in this 22 millimeter Griffin tank, but feel free to build along with me with whatever you got. So today's build is going to be a little bit different than my first Griffin build. Today I'm going to be using some Clapton wire. I'm expecting excellent flavor, great vapor production, and the ability to go up to about 100 watts. So without further ado, let's go ahead and grab your wick, grab your wire, grab your mod, your add your tools, all all that good stuff let's go down to the close-up view and build it up all right guys ready to go here let's go ahead and get started with this build so first of all we have our griffin already ready to go broken down no coils on it, anything like that today we're going to be using more of this coil master clapton wire that we used in yesterday's video um, doing this in dual coil configuration and we should get some really good flavor out of it so let's go ahead and get started we're going to need about eight or so inches of this wire here for a dual coil. Go ahead and grab our clippers, clip it off. So first thing I want to do, again, you don't have to use coil master wire. That's just what I'm using. You can find spools of this stuff online for dirt cheap. That's a good thing. Thank God for technology and you know, the world that we live in today, because a couple years ago, you'd have to build this all by yourself. Oh no. But we are going to be uh, wrapping a dual six wrap today. So I'm gonna do it by hand on a three millimeter bit here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. And you want those leads coming right back to you. Take the coil off, squish it together, get those leads all nice and straight, get ready to go for installation. Then we're just gonna do it again. All one fluid motion, keeping tension on that wire so we don't uh, have a lot of crazy gaps or anything like that. Um, usually when I'm straightening out these leads, I'm holding onto the coil part of it and just kind of pulling on it so that it tightens up the coil around the bit. So there we go, we have our two coils all ready to be installed. Let's go ahead and bring in our mod real quick. Here is our Griffin. This is the Griffin 22 millimeter. However, it will work exactly the same on a 24 millimeter. We're doing the over under technique for our coils here. So just install like so, have them right up next to that post and tighten them down. So now we're gonna just clip off our excess. Careful, watch your eyes when you're doing that. Um, so I'm not gonna show you the other coil because it's exactly the same, but what you wanna do is just kinda straighten up that coil real quick and pull it slightly away from the terminals. That way it not only snugs up the coil around the bit, but it also makes sure you have a little bit of a gap so it doesn't short out on your posts. So just like that, you have one coil all ready to go. I'm just gonna install the other one real quick and I'll be right back. So before we put any heat to these coils, you just wanna make sure they're pretty much even uh, every which way you look at them. They're really not looking too pretty right now, but I hope I can get those uh, uh, wraps to lay right next to each other when we start putting some heat to it. So no big deal, don't worry about it quite yet. Don't freak out unless your coils just uh, still look like crap after you put some heat to them. So first thing you wanna do is just uh, lower your wattage. I have it down to about 50 watts right now. Grab your ceramic tweezers and give it a quick pulse and just immediately start to pinch. You want those coils seated right next to each other as best as you can get them. And just like that, we have two relatively even coils. Uh, they're not perfect, but they're pretty darn close. It's really tough with this Clapton wire here because it is so springy, but I feel like the performance is not gonna be affected at all by those little minimal spaces there. Just uh, give it a once over before you start wicking, just to make sure those coils are firing up at the same rate. Actually, I'm gonna turn it up real quick. We'll do it about 100 watts just to make sure they have about the same ramp time here. 
yeah, we're looking pretty good. So um, I'm just going to make them look a little bit prettier before we wick them here. And then we'll go ahead and uh, get these things all wicked up. So one thing you can do with the Griffin is actually take off the chimney section and just put it on here. And we're just going to test fire it, make sure nothing shorts out or anything like that. There we go. I think we're in good shape. So let's go ahead and back off the camera and we're gonna wick it. So hopefully you guys watched my other Griffin build that I did a while ago. Um, but this one is just gonna be a real quick down and dirty way to, to wick this thing. I like to take about half a, a sheet, like one layer of cotton and then just rip off all the hard edges. So I just end up with this nice fluffy loose cotton here. And what I do is just roll the just the tip part of it here and the rest just kind of leave as loose as possible. Let it just kind of naturally roll with the end. But make sure the whole thing kind of rolls up. But you want to just make sure that first little bit is nice and tight. So when you get that first part nice and tight, you can just go ahead and slip that through the coil. Now if you're not a cotton waster like me, then you can probably get two coils out of one piece of cotton. But... You know what, I like to waste cotton. I'm just preparing my other sheet now. As you can see, I just kind of got it right and nice and tight so that I have plenty to work with on both ends there. And I'm just gonna let that dangle for a second as I prepare this piece. Just get it nice and pointy towards the end. Like that. And it should just slip right through. And the rest of that piece will be nice and tight inside the coil. So you get a good amount of wicking actually touching the coil. That's really the main goal here. Now I do this differently than a lot of people. Some people will pull the wicks down, put the little ring over it and snip it. Um, what I normally do is just measure the length that I'm looking for, which is about halfway up the little wick holes at the bottom there. And I'll just trim it right there. I really don't put a whole lot of cotton in my griffin tank but that's just me again wicking is very personal and it's just gonna you know be your own kind of style but this is just how i do it um, i prefer not to have that little ring in there but some people do I've, i got a lot of comments saying they they have it working just fine with the ring installed i can't seem to get it work working like that so i'm just doing it like this now what you want to do is just trim it off pretty close to what you normally do. Then just tuck your wicks down without juicing it or anything like that. And just checking where you're at as far as how much cotton you got in there. And then just trim it to suit. Next thing we're gonna do is put a little bit of our juice on there. That's just to get this stuff to stick to the actual RTA. And just a light juicing, <laughs> light juicing. But uh, just put a little bit of juice on there just so you can stick them into place and kind of form them a little bit. This kind of can get messy, which I can definitely see why people want to do it the traditional way, but you know what? This way just seems to work best for me, so I guess I'm just gonna go for it. Um, again, if you can get that little ring to hold those wicks without getting a lot of dry hits, then more power to you, but this is just how I do it, and this is the way I prefer doing it. So this, this part here, it's going to get your tools all kind of nasty, but, you know, it's a good practice just to clean your tools. Not every time you build, but, you know, when you decide to clean your RDAs or something like that, then just scrub up your tools too, because, you know, you got to have nice clean tools you're working with, otherwise things can get awfully messy. So next thing I do is just kind of gently place those wicks in that little hole where the uh, ring normally sits and I just try to form them as best as I can to those holes that way my um, sleeve my chamber my chimney will fit right over there without binding up on those uh, wicks that are dangling down and this is the part when you're gonna get your tools all gross because you're gonna end up trimming off a little bit more sometimes and that's all covered in juice so it gets a little bit nasty but just uh, do your best to get those wicks in place without getting too messy.
So I think we're looking pretty good here. Let's go ahead and uh, give it our first attempt to try to put the chimney section on. Hopefully this works. Fingers crossed here. As long as it doesn't bind up, then you're good to go. And it looks like we got it first try. Screwed on there with very little resistance, so I think we're all set. I'm just gonna go ahead and fill up the tank. I'm that confident in myself. But um, yeah, relating to the whole mess factor, you know, it's great to have one of these build mats because um, it's just a nice clean spot to build on. You're not gonna get a mess all over the kitchen table or anything like that. I'm sure you guys are used to that though. Um, that's kind of why I wanna offer Fresh Build Friday build mats. So, you know, if you wanna see me do Fresh Build Friday build mats, just drop a comment in the box below. Um, and anything you wanna talk about really, just comment down there. I'll be sure to get back to you. So as long as you don't have juice just pouring out your air holes, you should be all set with this, which we are looking all right. Um, so I'm just gonna leave a little bit of an air gap at the top here, screw my top cap back on. Let's go ahead and give this thing a test vape real quick. Well, it vapes. So let's go back to the main screen and have a chat about this. All right, guys, we are back. Now we're gonna talk about this build real quick. Now my first impression of this build is holy clouds, Batman. I'm getting tremendous vapor production off of this one. But not only that, I'm getting great flavor as well. Right now I'm vaping it at 100 watts. The final resistance came out to 0.43 ohms, which is just perfect. I'm getting the just the right combination of flavor and clouds. Uh, I'm vaping in here today some straw melon head, strawman, strawman, strawman head. Sure, strawman head. It's just such a bright flavor. It's very, very enjoyable. Now I'm real quick. I'm just gonna blow a few more clouds for you guys. Then we'll sign out. So one final thing about this build is that I have not gotten a single hint of a dry hit, which is awesome. I really can't believe how well this thing is wicking. So make sure you stay tuned for day five, the final day of Fresh Build Week. Tomorrow I've got a temperature control build for you guys, so stay tuned for that. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for more videos just like this. Don't forget to leave comments in the box below of what you think of this build, whether or not you want to try it out for yourself. And if you do try it out, make sure you let me know your thoughts below. Check out the advocacy links in the description below. I have them there for you so you can fight for your right to vape. And check me out on all my different social medias. I have Twitter and Instagram. Make sure you follow me on there. Like my page on Facebook. Check out my Snapchat. And if you want to give me a couple of bucks on Patreon, that would be awesome as well. Anyways, guys, that about does it for this video. Thank you so much for joining me. And as always, vape on. I'm getting X to the X.